from Gigi's Fabric Shop and home of Janome Junkies. And we have a really nice informative video for you guys today. Um, I'm gonna be covering um, basically the long checklist of things that you should be going over when you're experiencing tension issues on your machine. I went over that on our live show on Monday. We do go live three times a week. Um, we'll link all that in the description for you guys. We do lots of tutorials, fabric, tips and tricks, kits, and all that fun stuff there. Um, and we talked about tension and tension issues. So this video is gonna be really informative. I'll show you what I'm using today, the spreadsheet that I'm kind of following on um, the checklist of things to go through. We'll link that in the description as well for you guys. It's on our Facebook group. So stay tuned for some tips and tricks. All right, so this is kind of what the spreadsheet looks like. It has um, let's talk tension issues with Gigi's Fabric Shop. And the first question I started off with was, has your machine been serviced in the last year? And however you answer that question, yes or no, you'll have a appropriate list to cover. So let's start off with that topic in general. Have you had your machine serviced in the last year? So if you are a computerized machine owner, um, you should be really getting your machine serviced every year, once a year, because there's not really much you can do to your computerized machine. So like if you have a Janome or Juki computerized machine, um, you know, DX7, F400, 9450, Skyline 9, M7, any of those computerized models, okay? So you have a computer screen, it's computerized, offers decorative stitches you can only do so much to your machine and you can't oil that machine the way it needs to be to run properly. So you should be bringing it in once a year to get professionally serviced at a trusted machine technician. So it doesn't have to be an authorized Juki or Janome dealer. Um, as long as they have a reputable name under their belt and they have a good reputation, anyone can clean a machine. Really, really can't. You just have to be educated enough to do it and understand how the mechanics work in a machine. So. Um, that is a big thing because usually 99% of the time when people bring me machines here in the shop and they're like, I'm experiencing skip stitches, tension issues, yada, yada, yada. My first question is, when's the last time you got your machine serviced? And sometimes the answers are never. Sometimes they are five years ago. Sometimes they're two years ago, but you should be bringing it in every year. And depending on how much sewing you're doing and if you're working with very linty fabrics, sometimes you should be bringing it in even six months at a time, okay? So that's for computerized. Now for my mechanical owners like TL18, 2010, anything that starts with the TL or the HD9 series, um, those machines are mechanical, okay? So you can do a lot on these machines. You can really service them, clean them, take care of them a lot more in depth than our computerized users here. So if you guys do your part and you do it correctly, you could probably get away with taking your machine to get professionally serviced every year and a half, two years, depending on the kind of sewing that you're doing. So um, that answer kind of fluctuates and has little guidelines to depending on what kind of machine you have. So let's say your answer is no. Has your machine not been serviced in the past year? We're gonna take it to get clean. Okay, that's step number one, because um, a clean machine is a happy machine. And like I said, that fixes the problem 99% of the time. Um, then after that, after you've gotten your machine serviced, then we're gonna keep up with the list that I talk about in has your machine been serviced in the last year? And the answer was yes, Boki, it's been serviced. I'm still having tension issues. Well, now let's go over all the good stuff that you need to check there. All right, so the first thing on the list is threading. Okay, I know it sounds silly and it's like, how am I threading the machine wrong? But everything that is made on your machine to thread has a purpose, okay? So if you're skipping this step right here, or you're skipping one of these little notches, it's gonna throw everything off its course. If it's there, it's meant to be threaded and it's meant to be used, okay? So you wanna start off by, I usually tell people, relax, let's start fresh, let's unthread the machine and start fresh, okay? Start from top to bottom. So make sure your threaded is gonna be step number one. Step number two is going to be making sure you're using quality thread, all right? So there are some brands out there that are not so wonderful and we've experimented on multiple brands, okay? I'm not gonna name any names, but there are some lower quality thread brands out there that really do make a very big difference in your tension quality, all right? We here at um, Gigi's Fabric Shop, we love the Glide Thread. We are obsessed with everything about it and they do have a large variety of threads. We'll plug it in at the bottom for you guys where you can see all that they have to offer. But the Glide 40 is a great way to go. This is a 40 weight polyester thread, 100% poly. It's stronger than cotton. It is virtually lint free and it's made here in the USA and it's just really, really great in all purpose from piecing to embroidery to top stitching to you name it, you can do it. 
this thread is fabulous and it's at such a good price point too. So this would be a great way to kind of trickle in. We have some bundles on our website that you guys can kind of try out the threads for yourselves, but using good quality thread makes a huge difference. If you don't like working with polyester thread, they do have a cotton version as well. This is the Cairo quilt. This is a 50 weight, which is a traditional weight for cotton threads, um, especially for piecing. This is gonna be an awesome high quality thread to use for um, your machine as well. So if you got gifted some thread from, you know, maybe your grandparents or your parents when they were sewing and it is old and 10 years old, five years old, I would say thread definitely has an expiration date and using old thread um, can cause a lot of issues. So let's start fresh and make sure you have good quality thread on your machine, all right? The next one's gonna be spool caps, okay? This is actually pretty interesting. So, like if you're working on the um, computerized machines, right? Your spools kind of sit vertically on the top and you use spool caps that cover the spool of thread. So my word of advice for you is if you're using this spool of thread, your spool cap that holds this in place should be no bigger than this circumference right here. It should be no larger. If it is, that has the potential of making it um, wrap around and get caught onto something, okay? So for these kinds of machines where the thread is standing on the top like so, you have the luxury of just placing it back here and having it stand up. Now, what happens sometimes with threads, especially such silky high quality threads like this, is sometimes it can unravel really, really quickly and it can get caught underneath um, the spool and it can pop out of the thread stand or cause some tension issues. So what I usually recommend is getting spool nets and we do actually have some in our Gigi's Fabric Shop app. I don't know if they're still in stock right now, but cause they go pretty quickly. Uh, but the spool nets are fabulous. They're just like a little net that gets placed over this spool and then it just gets to be threaded the way it's supposed to. So um, those would be my recommendations. I really don't recommend using spool caps on kind of stand up models like this because it's just something extra for the thread to wrap around. Now you can use like anti-vibration cones that go underneath your large spools to help kind of the vibration there. But as far as um, thread quickly unraveling off of the threads, I would highly encourage you to do um, a spool net so it just kind of helps the way that that feeds. All right, so after addressing thread and spool caps, next is going to be needle size. So making sure you have a fresh needle, so needle life too. It's, it's really important that you're using a you know fresh needle, an appropriate size needle. I've caught a lot of you um, free motion quilting with 70, 10 needles. That is not a good size, it's far too thin. So if you wanna be a little bit more on the same page about needles and what needles to use, there's a video that we did um, on needle sizes, all the different types of needles that are out there. Needles can get pretty intricate, but I, we tried to kind of make it a little bit more simplified for you guys. So we'll plug that in at the end here too. I would highly encourage you guys to go watch that video. So, um, you know, making sure you have a fresh needle in there. If your needle's been uh, already used for a couple of projects, it's time to change it out. Using a fresh needle is very important and using the appropriate sized needle. So check out that needle video for kind of like more in depth on that. All right, next up is gonna be bobbin tension. So um, bobbin tension is super important. Having the correct tension set on your machine is um, always step number one. So if you have a computerized machine, you kind of are skipping over this step. The only thing that's gonna apply to you is bobbin tension. So across the board, having appropriate bobbin tension is really important. So you see this bobbin right here, it is perfectly wound, it is evenly distributed. And if I do what I call the squish test, where I squish it with my fingers and it's not going anywhere, okay, it's nice and firm, there's no looping, it's nice and consistent like I mentioned, this is appropriate bobbin tension. No matter if you're using a um, TL machine or a computerized machine or the HT9 or the M7 or a multi-needle embroidery machine, you should have a evenly fed bobbin just like this, okay? If there's looping or if your bobbin is coming down to the end and you're using it on a project, the tension that was first created in the very beginning of your bobbin winding is not true and it's not like good tension because it's trying to like, grasp on. Um, so we have to kind of try to avoid playing like bobbin roulette and just seeing how long our bobbins can last us because towards the end of that bobbin life, uh, tension definitely could be a little wonky. So um, that is across the board. Now for my mechanical users where you adjust your tension on your bobbin case, 
It's very important that you're placing it in correctly. So, you know, making sure the thread's falling from the right side. This is gonna apply to the HD9 and the TL machines, okay? Um, so it pops in, you know, you have it threaded properly. And then for the bobbin test. So if you have your bobbin, okay, this is, this is number one, after you've checked all that other stuff, you're gonna place your bobbin in and if you lift it up and you, oh, this is way too tight, this is perfect. So and I'm wiggling in, it's not going anywhere. Staying up, that is far too tight. It is way too tight. Now let's say I had it in my hand and I could just pull it and pull it and pull it and I couldn't get it off my hand. That's far too loose. Okay, so I'm gonna go adjust this. Let me grab my little T-screw right here and I'll adjust it for you. So you have these little, this little screw right here. You have this on the TL and you also have it on the um, HD9. And you're just gonna loosen it in like five minute increments. Okay, not anything huge, just little five minute increments. Oh, do I? Okay. And we do have a video, I'm gonna drop in the link below of the description for the Juki TL model machine and the Janome. Um, HG9 on how to set up the tension if oh, yeah, you need to right. do you the tension on the bobbin and on the machine itself. That's perfect. Um, so if that is the step that you are on, please go watch those videos because this will okay. make this very clear. I got it. Okay, so I did have to loosen it probably like 10 minutes for it to get to the happy place that I like. So here it is in my hand. I'm going to lift it and it's going to go up, but then when I give it a little wiggle, it drops. So I'm lifting, wiggling, and it's dropping. Okay, that's perfect tension. No matter if you're working with 50, 40, uh, 60 weight thread, industrial style thread, does not matter. Tension starts in the bobbin first before you start touching all this good stuff up here. Okay. So making sure you have that appropriate tension is super important. Okay. And then obviously placing it inside correctly. So when you're placing in your um, bobbin cases, you want to make sure you hear that little snap every single time to make sure that it's just the way all it right. should be. So next up on the checklist, I know it seems like a lot, but all this stuff is really important. And when I'm troubleshooting with customers on the phone, it is really important to go through this stuff. So next thing is gonna be checking your needle plate, all right? This one is, is one that's common and not so common. Um, checking your needle plate is gonna be really important. So um, where the needle goes down into the machine, that little opening, can get burrs, especially on our mechanical machines where we're doing those rough and tough projects and we're maybe trying to push our machines to their limits. It is very likely to hit the needle plate more than more often than not. If you've broken a needle on your machine, you've probably nicked the needle plate. Um, so it's good to evaluate your plate, especially when you're experiencing tension issues to just see if there's any burrs because burrs can get worse over time. They can get the thread caught up and they will cause tension issues. I know personally on my computerized machine at home, I have a Skyline 9 um, and I kept getting terrible tension right at a quarter inch. And I was like, what is going on? I was so frustrated couldn't understand what was I doing wrong um, and lo and behold my stitch plate had a burr right where the needle would be for a quarter inch because I bought it used and whoever was using it like wore their machine out and there was a very intense groove there so I couldn't buff it out sometimes you can buff them out um, and make them a little bit better um, but that one was unbuffable and it definitely needed to get replaced so checking your needle plate is really really important next up is have you already touched your tension did you touch it it's okay, you can tell me. If you already started touching tension, uh, I, it's kind of good to know because if you already started tightening it up and doing crazy things to the top, we kind of have to backtrack or a little bit and I have to understand where you're at and where you're at because no two machines have the perfect tension, especially on the mechanical machines. Um, they have, you have to not be afraid to play with tension. You can't, you can't be afraid, you gotta do it. No, no machines have the same tension settings, but if you're telling me you're working with this kind of thread and your tension's all the way up at four, I'll know you're doing something wrong, right? So um, it's really good to kind of uncover those things as well. So um, just making sure you've not touched your tension uh, dials a lot and made drastic changes is good to know, all right? Um, and then as far as the computerized machines go with touching your tension, um, I like the computerized machines a little bit better when it comes to tension because uh, you don't really have to do much to them. So you kind of usually have like a three dot auto setting area. So like auto is usually within these three dots. If you have to make any drastic changes um, and you haven't changed anything really crazy, it's probably because the machine's dirty or something else that we've covered is causing you to have tension issues. Because even working with 40, 50, or 60 weight thread, you shouldn't have to play with your automatic tension up there. You really shouldn't. 
Um, only when working with maybe some specialty kind of threads, thicker threads, finer threads, metallic threads maybe. Um, but most of the time, your tension is always kind of like set in stone on those computerized machines. So keep that in mind because if you're having to touch that all of a sudden, something is not right. Okay, we'll have to double check that. All right, another thing to check, um, especially more so on the mechanical machines, is presser foot pressure and your micro lifter. So if you have the TL18, your micro lifter, if you're using that on a, on unappropriate projects, it's going to cause tension issues because you don't have any presser foot pressure. Uh, if you're applying too much pressure on a very thin project, it's going to make warping. It's going to make your stitches maybe more um, tightened up. Um, if you are not having enough pressure and you've like work, you're working with thin fabrics, but you don't have enough pressure, um, it's kind of like you find like it's just going all the way around. It's not really feeding nice and steady. So um, making sure you're having those settings under control can have a play in your um, stitch quality. Fun thing I figured out on the live show on Monday, someone was like, Boki, why do I have different stitch lengths when I work with different kinds of presser feet? It was more so for a TL machine, like a mechanical machine. So um, I was like, you know what? That's a great question. I never really thought about that. And I knew immediately why. On the mechanical machines, especially, all of them have, some of them have two springs that make them hop like this. You see how it's like wiggling up and down? Some of them have two springs, some of them have one spring, some of them have a long spring, some of them have three springs. With those springs, they apply more and less pressure on each project. So if it's applying more pressure, it's going to create the stitches a little bit smaller. If it's going to be a one spring kind of foot, it's gonna have less pressure. So your stitches might look longer. Um, that was something I never really thought about before. It's the reason why I love sharing stuff with you guys because you guys make me think of other things. Um, so that's something to keep in mind too. So just making sure you have all those settings under control is nice as well. And if you're not familiar with it, make sure you read up on your manual, all right? Um, and then last but not least is oiling. So if you have a computerized machine, ignore this part. Computerized machines do not get oiled by you. They get oiled when you take them in to get a servicing, unless your manual states otherwise, okay? But 90% of the time it doesn't need any oiling, okay? So this is more so for my mechanical users out there. So when's the last time you oiled your machine? I just wanna reiterate that oil is a good thing, but less is more. So your machine not being oiled is fixable, but your machine being over oiled is a problem, okay? Because it can cause so many other domino effects of things. So it's really important. We do have a video on oiling on the TL machines. We can link that in there for you guys. Um, I kind of go over how to do that and when to do it. So it's good to be aware of that no matter what machine you have, um, how often you should be oiling it. So when's the last time you oiled it? Because if you haven't oiled it in like three projects, it's probably really dry. <laughs> so it's time to oil it. So at this point, you reach the end of my long list. And if everything is the way it should be, which 99% of the time something's in that list that's what's causing you um, issues. Um, it's time to refer to your manual and um, print out. I usually make a copy of the manual. There's a page in there where it talks about tension and how it's 50-50. Um, it's time to go to your manual and read on that. I'm gonna see if I can find that paper really quickly. I'll be right back because I'm gonna look for it. Okay, so I found the paper. Um, I just took a copy of this. This was out of the TL manual. So you'll notice on this page, um, it actually says, it talks about bobbin tension and that should be step number one. So making sure you're doing the bobbin test properly and having that accurate tension, all right? And then here we start talking about proper tension. Proper tension looks like 50-50 and this is not anything fancy I put together for you guys. It's in your manual, all right? This is a 50-50 blend and that's what thread should look like, okay? Now you'll start, the most experienced problems other than skip stitching is going to be where your top tension looks great, but your bottom tension looks like a straight solid line. You don't have those defined dinosaur hump stitches. So what happens here is that you need to increase the needle tension, okay? And this is all assuming that your bobbin tension is proper. So what's gonna have to happen here is you're going to have to increase the top tension. So you're going to turn it to the right, make it greater, okay? Apply more tension. And when you're doing this, I suggest doing it in half turns. So like uh, 30 minute increments, whereas any adjustments we were making to the bobbin case was in five minute increments, all right? Next common problem is where the bottom looks spectacular and all defined, but the top is looking like one solid line that has no definition 
and maybe you're getting some popping of the bottom color. That means your top tension is too tight and you need to decrease the needle thread. So instead of um, tightening it, we're going to loosen it up. Okay, so we're going to alleviate some of the pressure or I mean alleviate some of the tension that's there because there's a spring that's applying more and less pressure there. So we're going to decrease it again by like a 30 minute increment and make adjustments. So it's really important to do that and do it in 30 minute increments because if you're doing like three turns, you're not gonna know what the stitches are gonna look like from here to here. So if you take it one step at a time, you'll slowly see those stitches change and you'll be able to identify what's your happy medium, right? Because you're like, well, I've already adjusted it. You gotta adjust it nice and slow so you can see those changes happening over time. So I highly encourage you to print this out or like bookmark it in your manual. It's really, really helpful. Um, and yeah, so I hope this is pretty helpful for you guys. Um, all the resources will be in the description for you. If you have any questions for me today, if you learned anything new, um, if you have any wisdom or anything that you've learned throughout the years of sewing that you would recommend in checking when you have tension issues, let me know in the comments below. Um, make sure you like and subscribe to our channel. We are always posting stuff weekly uh, and we love to keep you guys informed and in the loop of things. So make sure you subscribe to our channel so you can get those notifications every time we post. All right, if you are in the market for a new machine, have any questions, concerns, comments, or just wanna chat with us, um, you can give us a call at 813-661-9000, or um, you can email us with any of your questions or concerns at sewingmachines411 at gmail.com. And yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Have a spectacular day, and I will see you on the next video.